Hello, Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do a review slash recap with my opinion on Love as a Locker Part 2. Season 5, Episode 37. It's titled Rules of Engagement. If you haven't seen Part 1, go check it out. Thank you. Let's get started. First couple is Bianca and David. Bianca is still at the bar at the hotel that Daniel's parents are staying at. I think it was the hotel that they were staying at. It looks like a hotel. She asks Daniel's cousin why did he convince Daniel not to marry her. The cousin said Daniel should marry somebody he hasn't met. Um, he hasn't met in person. So the parents, they're left out. And Bianca and the cousin, they go to the pool area. And um, the cousin told her that her and Daniel are going to have lots of problems. She told him that every relationship has problems. The cousin said that if he, the cousin said, what if he relapsed? Bianca said in her confessional that Daniel did relapse and um, he did fentanyl. But um, the only reason he relapsed was because he was around people who was doing it. Is she even listening to what she's saying? She's saying he's relapsed because he was with people who were doing it. But you want to drink alcohol in front of him so he can relapse. Because then he'll be with someone who is doing it. I don't think she's listening to what she's saying. Um, Bianca, Bianca told the cousin that she is not worried about Daniel relapsing. The cousin told her not to drink around Daniel. Bianca told him that she liked to drink. The cousin said in his confessional that Bianca has a drinking problem. And he said, hmm. And he said that she is going to help Daniel break his parole rules by having alcohol around him. Bianca is delusional. And I hope Daniel dumps her sooner than later. Next, Bianca is getting ready to go pick up Daniel from prison. She is upset that his family is going to be there also. She is one selfish, petty child. The man needs all the support he can get. Imagine getting out of prison after being in prison for, uh, for years. Right? And only one person shows up um, to meet you. And it's not even your blood relative. You'll feel like um, nobody cares. You'll feel lonely. You'll feel depressed. You'll be scared. Bianca is showing um, that she cares for nobody but Bianca. So the family and Bianca, they're waiting for David. They're at the prison and they're waiting for David to come out the gates or the doors. And the cousin got into a back and forth with Bianca telling her that she's a girlfriend. She ain't no fiancé. Um, Bianca, in her mind, she is a fiancé and that's all she's concerned about and that's that. Next up, Julian and Christine. So we see Julian on face, a FaceTime call doing an interview. He is wearing a crushed up shirt and a tie. And, um, and he's wearing shorts. I think he should have put on a suit. I mean, I know they can only see the top half of him, but still, he looked raggedy. Christine is upstairs making a flyer for her open night mic. Her open mic night. <laughs> At least um, they're both doing something, you know, to improve their financial situation, right? But her flyer looked like a five-year-old did it. <laughs> she said she was too scared to do stand-up when she was in prison. But she ain't scared to do it in front of a bunch of people to do um, open mic night. But she's afraid, she was afraid to do it in prison. Do her comedy in prison? That's crazy to me. In front of a bunch of criminals, female criminals, she was scared? Come on. Them girls were high and shit. I mean, and stuff. <laughs> Those girls were high. Do your comedy in front of them. What's the big deal? So she goes downstairs um, to talk to Julian about doing her open mic. And he busts her bubble. Julian don't want her to do open mic night. He wants her to pick up extra hours, um, extra, uh, extra shifts at the tavern so that she can make that money. Julian is all about making that money. And I agree with Julian. We doing open mic night for you. You're not funny. Go make that money. Go pick up that extra um, shift and make that money. <laughs> I 
Matter of fact, I think Julian should go fill out a uh, application at the tavern too and go work at the tavern until he can find a job that he likes. <laughs> you should go to the tavern. But Julian told her that he doesn't think she's funny. <laughs> and I, I agree with him. She don't give off funny vibes. The vibe she gives off is needy, whiny, and bitchy. <laughs> Julian said if people don't laugh at her jokes, she might relapse and go do some drugs. <laughs> but Christine don't care what Julian talking about. She's going to do her open mic night. And she asked him to come, and he said he'd think about it. I don't think these people are going to be laughing with her. These people are going to be laughing at her. She better cut the crap and go pick up some extra shit at the tavern. Get about this open mic comedy thing. Next, Christine is getting ready to do her open mic night, and she is so tacky. She um, writes a reminder on the mirror for Julian, and um, she stick her flyer on the mirror with Band-Aid. And then she draw boobs with her lipstick on the mirror. And then she wrote something disgusting. Because they couldn't show it because they blurred it out. And she said, um. She's gonna, uh, she wrote something sexy on there. Just, she, she wrote a sexy reminder on the mirror for him. So she gets to the place, the comedy place. And her co-workers are there to support her. But Julian is not there. And she's disappointed that he's not there. So she asks for a shot. So her co-worker asks her, can you have a shot? She goes, no, but I'm going to have one anyway. They never showed her having a shot, but they called her on stage and then it went off. Next up, we have Kim and Joey. Kim is stressed about money, but it's her freaking fault because she keeps giving Joey her damn card. And I said last review, the only reason she gives him her, her card is because she's trying to keep him. Now, um... We find out that Joey's ex um, sent Kimberly a friend request. So Kimberly asked Joey if he got a friend request. He said yes. She asked him if he was going, um, if he was ever going to tell her that his ex sent him a friend request. He said it's no big deal. She said it is to me. I don't know why I don't know to block this woman. Then Joey said she keeps texting me. Kimberly was like, what do you mean she keeps texting you? How did she get your number? And lying ass Joey said, Mike gave her my number. He didn't say, I told Mike to give her my number. He said, Mike gave her my number. So these lying ass men. Um, then he told Kimberly that he downloaded WhatsApp so that they, him and his ex can talk discreetly. Kimberly got pissed. She said, let me see your damn phone. And she snatched his phone out of his hand and she went through his messages. And she realized that they have been messaging each other for over a long period of time. And he tells his, his ex everything. He tells her where he is, where he's going, what he's doing, how he's doing it, who he's doing it with. He tells her everything. It's like he's more in a relationship with the ex than he is with Kimberly. So Joey snatched his phone back from Kimberly. He said, give me my, my effing phone. He said the actual word. Give me my effing phone. She said, yeah, the, the phone I paid for. He told her to go to the engagement part, party by herself because he's pissed at her now. He so, told her to go to the engagement party by herself. And then he leaves. Why on earth did she hitch her wagon to this buffoon? So Joey is driving and he's saying, he's, um, he said he's going to text his ex and meet her, um, and then he's calling her a dumbass bitch. Why is he calling his ex a dumbass bitch? Why is he calling her names when he was the one that told his friend to give the ex his phone number? Why is she the dumbass bitch? And he texts the, the, the um, ex every day constantly, but he's calling her a dumbass bitch. I don't get it. And while, when he's texting her constantly, when he told a friend to give her his phone number, now he's texting her constantly, what he's doing is he's leading her on. So why is she the dumbass bitch? Joey is the dumbass bitch. Anyway, they are going to meet at a park so that he can get some closure. He is salty that she ghosted him when he went to prison. But she wasn't his wife, so why? what's the big deal? She was only his girlfriend. And then she decided to move on. So why is he so pissed at her? He probably used to cheat on her anyway because they said he cheated on every single girlfriend he had. 
And I bet you if the roles were reversed, he wouldn't have waited on her. He wouldn't have sat waiting on her while she was in jail. What was she supposed to do? Sit around twiddling her thumbs waiting for her cheating boyfriend to get out of prison? Be crazy. Joe needs to get over him, himself. I need to you need to find pants that fit him. Last but not least, we have Letitia and Keith. Letitia wrote the news to her kids that Keith is not coming home anytime soon. The youngest daughter cried. And she also told them that they're moving. Um and they're moving to another rental. Why don't she just buy a house? She claims she got all that money. Instead of paying people's rent, buy a house. So she's thinking of re relocating somewhere warm, somewhere close to the beach. That's what I'm going to do when I retire. In seven years when I retire, I'm going to move somewhere close to the beach. But she needs to buy a house and quit paying people's rent. And that was the end of the episode, and this is the end of my review. Thank you so very much for watching. Princess on the Pillow here. Bye.